on my hand and showed him something I had gotten at school for being a good student, a small piece of chocolate. But as I opened my hand, we noticed the chocolate was starting to melt. I started to panic. Amwai was calm. He grabbed the melting chocolate from my hand, placed it in a pouch she was wearing, and zipped the pouch up. He told me that if I'd kept holding it in my hand, it would just continue to melt, and that the pouch was also keeping it safe from the sun. All I could think was, hmm, you just took my chocolate. I was skeptical, not only because I didn't have a chocolate anymore, but also because it seemed like the pouch would make it melt more. If I held it in my hand, at least the air could get to it. Putting it in the pouch seemed like wrapping yourself up in a blanket on a hot summer day, illogical to me. But I obliged. I decided to test his theory, and when we got home, sure enough, he was right. I was elated. The chocolate didn't melt any further, and I'm why I had just saved my chocolate. I remember that moment so vividly. It seems like such a small, silly moment in our relationship, but that day I learned my lesson. My logic was wrong. Um, why taught me that things aren't always as they seem, and that set off a spark of curiosity. That moment's still teaching me lessons to this day, the latest being, even the smallest things you say to a young person can have a tremendous impact on their life. But it's not just um, why who gives me these important life lessons. Whenever I'm exercising, my heart is pumping, and my body is hurting, I think about Uncle Hai, when we used to go on 30 mile bike rides, and at mile 27, I would be exhausted and look up to see Hyde just chilling, cruising on his bike. Uncle Hyde taught me that a lot of that hurt is actually just in my head, so chill and keep pedaling, we're almost there. And not to mention all the lessons from Bum Wai, my mom, my aunt, my uncles, this family, and Am Wai's family have taught and continued to teach me. I'm thankful for this family and I'm so fortunate to be Am Wai's grandson. To have grown up with a man who achieved so much and is so well-rounded, yet stayed humble and kind. He's taught me many things already. Namwai, Bamwai, Uncle Hai, and Uncle Sun, they still teach me things. I'm sure they'll continue to do so. Thank you. Good morning. Um, my name's Sam Lee. Um, I'm the grandson of Huang Lei. I'm Nick Lei, son of Huang Lei. I um, just want to say a couple words about our grandfather, but um, yeah, our grandfather was a great man. Um, I would see him all the time when I was younger, and it was always a treat just to see him. Um, I remember playing soccer with him in the woods. I remember him taking me out to eat. And I just remember us watching TV um, after school and stuff. But um, growing up and going to college and being away from him was really hard. Um, I remember coming home and seeing him. And after all the finals, after all the tests, after all the homework and all the tough times that I've had at school, all that would melt away whenever I'd see him. He always was the calm in the storm of my life, um, and I miss him dearly. Um, should take this time to not only mourn, but also to celebrate his life, and um, that's, just what, that's just my piece here. People aren't remembered by their rewards or accomplishments, but by the lives that they touch. Um, our Noi touched many lives, whether it was serving in the military, taking care of his family during their move to the United States, and for me personally, being honored to have his first name as my middle name. The impact he has had on all of us is profound and should be an inspiration to everybody. Um, I know he's up there in heaven, hanging out with our Banoi, 
our Uncle High and my dad, uh, drinking a beer and getting ready to watch the Women's World Cup. Um, so let's definitely take some time, not just to mourn, but also to celebrate the lives that he has impacted and touched, because many of us in this room would not be here without his sacrifice today. That was um, in the darker uniform in the stand up, Sam. That, that, Sammy is my son, um, and Nick, stand up, is um, my brother, um, Lemon Sung, son. So thank you very much for your, your, your words today, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, next, I would like to, to formally introduce um, a person who has been instrumental in our lives, one of my dad's best friends. Um, both as a colleague and and in life, and um, we could not have done all the things that we were able to do, um, getting to the United States and um, and seeing our our children flourish the way we see them today without um, the help of this individual and his family and the larger U.S. Air Force intelligence family in, um, in Virginia. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. John Kim, who is the counterpart of my father, U.S. counterpart of my father, um, whilst my father was uh, the colonel in the South Vietnamese Air Force. Mr. Kim, thank you. Thank you, Tan, and the family for giving me the honor of saying a few words about my friend Paul. As I looked at his picture on the easel this morning with his guitar and his little beret, I thought of all of the skills and capabilities of this man, and all of you know that. I would like to just share my memories of Paul, my friend, Paul as a warrior. It was 50 years ago to this month, exactly 50 years ago, when I went to Tansanud Air Base to meet Colonel Lehman Wong, Director of Intelligence for all the Vietnamese Air Forces. The most important and critical position that he held as a leader of his Air Force. I was a little bit concerned because I was to be the new United States Air Force counterpart to the Vietnamese Air Force. I went to Tan San Nguyen and went to his office. As I entered his office, he got up from his desk and walked around, and he took my hand and shook it. And he looked at me and he says, welcome to South Vietnam. We have a lot of work to do. And I was taken how soft his voice was and how kind he seemed to be, although his grip and his handshake was very, very strong. I saluted him and I said, yes, sir, we do have a lot of work to do. For the next two years, <clears throat> we conducted many successful operations against the enemy. But at the end of the two years, we both knew that the war was not going good for us. I received orders from my headquarters that I was to talk to Colonel Wong about a plan to evacuate him from South Vietnam. The reason was because of his important position. He just had too much information about how the war was, to, was being conducted. And we knew that if he was captured by the enemy, things would not turn out good for him or his family or his officers that worked for him. I went to Paul and I said, I've received orders to sit down and plan with you 
your evacuation. And he looked at me with tears in his eyes and he said, John, I am not going to leave South Vietnam without my family going first. And although I tried to argue with him, he was firm in his conviction. He says, no, my family will be the first ones to evacuate, and then we'll talk about me being evacuated. So we did the planning, and of course, all of you know the results of that. And as I look around to his family, and to many, probably many of you here, if it wasn't for Paul, you wouldn't be here today. So all of you know the importance of the decisions he made and the actions he took. It was later after uh, the evacuation, I sat with Paul because my job still hadn't been completed. My job was to get him out of the country and he was a difficult person to convince to leave. <clears throat> so we sat down and, and I said, we need to make a plan anyway for your evacuation. And he looked at me and said, let's make it simple a real simple plan that I'll be able to execute. Well, the plan was simple. It was just to steal an airplane and fly it out of Vietnam to Thailand. The first option, of course, was to fly overland over Cambodia to Thailand, but because of the surface-to-air missiles along the routes, it just was too dangerous for him to do that. So the second option which we talked about was that he would take that airplane and fly south around the Khansan Island, and if you know where that's located, and he would go around the southern tip of South Vietnam and make his way to the Gulf of Siam. Um, and we chose that option. We said that would be a workable option. But I said to him, Paul, I said, there's not enough gasoline for that airplane to get to Thailand. You will never make it. He said, John, this is just a plan. It's a simple plan. He says, I'm going to take an airplane. I'm going to fly around the south end of the South Vietnam. I'll crash the airplane into the ocean, and you come and pick me up. <laughs> and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and we both started laughing. I mean, it was a very serious moment, <clears throat> but in his mind, it was a simple plan. I left... South Vietnam on the 27th of April, 1975. And I said to Paul, I said, we will stay in touch. We had communications capabilities. And I said to myself, is this the last time that I'm gonna see this gentleman? And with heavy heart, we hugged and said goodbye. And I went back to Thailand and we kept communicating. And I kept saying, Paul, you need to leave. You need to leave now. He says, we're not ready. He says, my leadership is still here. He says, when they're gone, I will know that it's time for me to go. Many hours later, I received communications from Paul, and he says, now is the time. You have to understand the situation. Many of you have seen the situation at the air base. The rockets were coming in. They were hitting the runways, hitting the buildings, destroying airplanes, and he had to take that airplane and maneuver it through all of that to get into the air and start coming south. Now, I spoke with our air and rescue uh, organization in Thailand, and they were prepared uh, to go and pick him up when he crashed into the sea. I also was in contact with the uh, air operations people, who, who would direct the operations uh, from that location. And a few hours later, they called me and said, we have spotted a single, aircraft, single engine aircraft, a very small one, that's flying up towards the Gulf of Siam. And as it turns out, they did the flyby and saw the tail number, and they identified it as the plane that Paul was flying. And they knew, they said, you know, He's on a suicide mission. He will never make it. He's going to run, up, run out of fuel. Well, as he got closer and closer, the airplane kept flying, the engine kept running. And we knew that he was just flying on fumes. And so he started a, a pattern, and they said, you're cleared 
to land on the runway. And Paul, being the warrior he was, he says, no, he says, I'm going to fly in the pattern until all the other Vietnamese aircraft have landed at the runway. And I, I said to myself, it's just typical of him, always thinking of others before himself. And when it was finally his turn to land at the runway, he came in, the propeller stopped turning, the engine was dead, and he was just gliding, and he made it to the end of the runway. They took Paul to the base operations, and of course I went, uh, quickly went to the base operations to make contact with him. And when I walked into the room, it, the room was full of South Vietnamese Air Force pilots who had landed before Paul did. And I hollered out, I said, I'm looking for Colonel Layman Wong. And they all turned and pointed and said, he's over there. And I went over to the pallet where he was asleep. And I tapped him on the shoulder. And he woke up, we looked at each other, and we embraced. It was such a great feeling to know that he had made it safely. And he looked at me, he said, John, he says, I don't know how to thank you. I have nothing to give you. I said, Paul, you don't have to give me anything. And then he reached back and got his earphones that he'd used to fly the airplane. He says, I want you to have this. And I kept that earphone for many years until some, some years later at another important event for Paul, my wife Jackie had the earphones placed inside of a shadow box and we presented that to him. I assume that you still have that as a family. My memories of this great gentleman is, is much like yours. I've never met anybody as soft-spoken, as, as fierce and concentrating on what he wanted to achieve. He was truly a great warrior, and there'll, be never, there'll never be anyone like him today. And I'm so proud to say that he was my friend. I salute you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The Lord be with you. In the waters of baptism, Huang Paul died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory.
Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. As our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, may our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Juan Paul, also find new strength. You are Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Lời Chúa trong sách Ngôn sứ Isaiah Ngày ấy trên núi này Đức Chúa các đạo binh sẽ đãi quân dân Một bữa tiệc Tiệc thịt béo Tiệc rượu ngon Thịt béo ngậy Rượu ngon tinh chế Trên núi này Người sẽ xé bỏ chiếc khăn che phủ mọi dân Và tấm màn trùm lên muôn nước Người sẽ vĩnh viễn tiêu diệt tử thần Đức Chúa là Chúa Thượng sẽ lao khô dòng lệ Trên muôn mặt mọi người Và trên to toàn cõi đất Người sẽ xóa sạch nỗi ô nhục của dân người Đức Chúa phán như vậy Ngày ấy người ta sẽ nói Đây là Thiên Chúa chúng ta Chúng ta từng trông đợi người và đã được người thương cứu độ Chính người là Đức Chúa Chúng ta từng đợi trong Nào ta cùng hoan hỷ vui mừng Bởi được người cứu độ Đó là lời Chúa
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, rather, was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 
Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion who witnessed what had happened glorified God and said, This man was innocent beyond doubt. When all the people who had gathered for this spectacle saw what had happened, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances stood at a distance, including the women who had followed him from Galilee and saw these events. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to all. We gather here at St. Philip Church to pray for the repose of the soul of Huang Paul Li. As we pray for him, we also honor him and remember him and celebrate his extraordinary life. May he rest in peace. May he be with God forever and with his beloved wife, Tree. May both of them have eternal life. I want to extend a special greeting to Teresa, to Michael, to Tan. Please know that we love you. Our hearts go out to you. We're praying for you at this difficult time. At the same time, we feel very honored to be here, to, to pray for your father, to think about him, to remember him, and realize what a tremendous follower of Christ, what an extraordinary man. Wang Paul Lee is. I also want to give a greeting to all the grandchildren, other family members. Please know you have our sympathy. We envy you to have such a grandfather, to have such a relative, extraordinary man. And please know our hearts and prayers go to you as well. In a particular way, I want to greet all friends who are present friends of Huang. In a special way, Bishop Laverde, thank you so much for being here today. Likewise, Father Tree, who has traveled all the way from the West Coast, from Los Angeles, to be with us. Thank you, Father Tree. And of course, Deacon Kong, our great support here at St. Philip, and long-term, long-time friend of Huang, going back to their founding of the Holy Martyrs of Vietnam, our parish here in this diocese of Arlington. As we gather and as we pray, we are in awe of Huang, simply in awe of him. So much, such a rich and full life. The highest praise we can give to him is that he is a follower of Christ. Wong, a follower of Jesus Christ. And as we think about what that means, it means to follow Jesus in every way. And today's gospel indicates on that Good Friday when Jesus died, it was darkness. Darkness covered the whole land. Wong knew about darkness from his experience in Vietnam with his young life, his young family, the war, the fight for freedom, and as John Kim mentioned earlier, 
how things went badly, the need to escape, in the process of escaping, not knowing if he was going to make it, not knowing if he's going to see his family again, Huang experienced darkness, just like the darkness of that Good Friday. But St. Paul, as we heard in our second reading, reminds us that darkness does not prevail. Jesus did die on Good Friday, but the darkness did not continue. The darkness was overwhelmed, and St. Paul tells us, it is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. And so while Jesus went through darkness, Jesus did not end in darkness, but rather Jesus' end is victory in the resurrection, which we're right now celebrating in this Easter season. And this is where we see Jesus coming among us as our brother, as our savior, to show us how to live. That there is darkness as a part of our experience. Jesus went into the depths of that darkness with his desolation and pain and death on the cross. Embraces the whole of our human experience and shows us that that is not the end. And so now the human spirit, specifically Huang, his strong, humble, loving spirit, receiving the spirit of Jesus, embracing that spirit, and conquering himself. Because St. Paul goes on to say, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword? No, in all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who has loved us. And so then, in the midst of the darkness, the spirit of Jesus in our souls, in Huang's soul, inspiring him to continue to be brave, to be faithful, and even to do extraordinary things as a part of the program. And as many of you already know, the extraordinary story of Huang being inspired while he was with the Air Force in Vietnam in the middle of April of 1975, foreseeing that terrible things were on the horizon for that city it is his beloved city where he was born, where he became a Catholic, where he was married. His children were born and baptized. He loved that city dearly, and he received an inspiration from his friend, his elder brother in Christ, Bernard, who suggested, I have these miraculous medals. You are an Air Force pilot. You can fly around the city and you can drop these medals to keep our city safe. If the city falls, at least let it not be destroyed. Let not the people suffer even more. And so we know that he spent an hour in the air flying over Saigon, his beloved city, dropping those medals to keep the city safe. The city fell, but the city was not destroyed by rockets and by bombs. Our Lady interceded. It's an indication, even in the midst of darkness, there are inspirations, there are blessings, there is light. This is just one event of faith in his life. This, for us then, is a call this day, a very dear and important call to every one of us, and it has to do with the life of Jesus of being a follower of, follower of Jesus. Not only when Jesus gives us consolations and miracles, but when Jesus invites us as his friends and followers into the darkness. It's the life of Jesus, the fullness of life that we're called into. St. Paul highlights this for us and speaks eloquently and often about the sufferings of Jesus 
but as we heard in this letter to the Romans today, also about nothing, no darkness, no distress, persecution, famine, sword. Nothing can separate us from the love that he has for us and the power that love has in our lives. We see this lived out humbly, beautifully, bravely in the life of Huang. And so today, what Jesus is calling for us, St. Paul's teachings calling for us, the church and Huang himself is faith. We have faith, that's why we're here today. Huang would be proud to know that his passing and our praying for him and celebrating his life is a moment for us to grow in faith. Faith that to have a friend, a dear father and grandfather, a dear relative, to have someone die is darkness for us. But faith that as Jesus died, it was not the end, so also Huang's death is not the end but rather the beginning of eternal life, rather the preparation for the resurrection of the body when Jesus comes again. Today, for every one of us, to every one of us, it is a moment to strengthen our faith, to go deeper in our faith, to have faith in Jesus and his resurrection. At the same time, this faith inspires us to pray. Pray for Huang, and that is what all the prayers of this Mass are about. For the repose of his soul eternally with God, and for our consolation, for us who are sad at his passing. We do that at this Mass today. We do that every day when we pray for the faithful departed. And we do this in the most powerful way at every Mass. We always pray for those who have died. So today we pray for Huang. In addition to praying, we also give thanks. And this again is where we are in awe of this man, each one of us giving thanks that we were a part of his life, that we could share his life. And I, I love what was written in the obituary in the program that you had This sums up so much about him. He was a warrior with the heart of an artist, a family man, a servant of God. What high praise for a man. He was a warrior with the heart of an artist, a family man, a servant of God. And those few words, which so powerfully describe Huang, opens up for all of you, for every one of us, memories we have of him. Dear memories, most especially for his family who were able to be with him so close, to see him, to hear stories about chocolate and how he was wise and, and the way to care for, for chocolates. There's so many other ways he touched each one of us. And this is where he touched St. Philip Parish, especially in bringing heart songs here. It was so neat to see him with, with Tree, his wife, the patriarchs, the matriarch of heart songs, playing beautiful music, leading the prisoners through Holy Week, touching our hearts, raising our spirits. The family of Huang with the family of St. Philip, a great blessing here at this parish. Also his military service. And thank you, John Kim, for your words today. So inspiring. What, what a story. What a story of courage. And thank you for your service. And thank you others for your service in the military which was so very important to Huang. Working as a Eucharistic minister for many years at Fairfax Hospital, how many people in, in anguish and loneliness receiving the Eucharist, having strength to go on in the midst of their sufferings. Prison ministry as well. The radio ministry, light of good news in the Vietnamese language here in our area. And then as mentioned earlier, along with Deacon Kong, founding members of the Holy Martyrs of Vietnam Parish. Such a great blessing for our diocese, for the Vietnamese community, to come together as fellow countrymen, to worship God and receive the sacraments. 
These are just a few things very quickly touched upon that are dear to all of our hearts and the reason for all of us to give thanks, to say, thank you, God, for bringing such a marvelous, wonderful, humble man into our lives. So we continue now with this Mass. We continue to pray for the repose of the soul of Huang, for other family members, his two sons, his wife, all the faithful departed. We remember them in our prayers and we continue to give thanks because when God puts such a, a wonderful person in our lives, it's a sign to us of his goodness to us, how he cares for us and watches over us. I want to close right now as Huang did in his written testimony about how he sprinkled those miraculous medals over the city of Saigon he wrote this in 2016, and these were his words, the way he ended that testimony, which I think is a great thing for us to hear right now. Words from him to us, invoking the prayers of the Blessed Mother over all of us at this time. May our beloved Mother, Virgin Mary, protect you, keep you safe throughout your lives. Please pray for each other. Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Amen. It is now our privilege and honor and duty to pray for Huang and for all those who have died. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. The response to each petition is, Lord, hear our prayer. Khi chịu phép rửa tội, Paul Maria Antoine Hoàng đã được Chúa hứa ban sự sống đời đời. Chúng ta hãy cầu xin Chúa thương cho người anh em của chúng ta đây được thông phần với các thánh của Chúa trên thiên đàng. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. God is full of mercy and compassion. May he forgive Paul Maria Antoine Huang any sins he committed through human frailty. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ông Paul Maria Antoine Huang đã được rước mình thánh Chúa là bánh ban sự sống đời đời. Chúng ta hãy cầu xin Chúa cho ông được sống lại trong ngày sau hết. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Paul Maria Antoine Huang's children and grandchildren, that they may be granted consolation from the Holy Spirit and discover hope in their grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Chúng ta hãy cầu xin Chúa cho các anh chị em chúng ta, những người đã ngủ yên trong niềm hy vọng phục sinh, và tất cả những người đã chết trong lòng thương xót của Chúa, được tiếp nhận và hưởng nhang thánh cực sáng của Chúa muôn đời, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all consolation, help us to comfort one another in our <coughs> grief, finding light in time. We pray for all those who loved, who have died. Lord, give them reward for their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Chúng ta hãy cầu xin Chúa cho anh em, chị em chúng ta đang tụ họp nơi đây trong niềm tin. Được có ngày cùng xung họp trong nước Chúa muôn đời. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are burned by their loss may be blessed with courage, strength, and patience. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice as your hand. Pray to the Lord for his name, for all good and all the Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord so that your departed servant, Huang Paul, may be taken up into glory with your son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord 
be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Veni Sunt Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, Qui venite nomine nomini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and the glorious martyrs, and St. Paul and Philip and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, with the clergy, Bishop Paul, and all the entire people who have gained, whom you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom ye have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Lin Hon, Falo, Marie Anton, Le Min Huang, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you are wiped away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you in all ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. O Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. At this time of Holy Communion, I invite those practicing Catholics who are able to come forward in two lines on either side of Huang's body. If you're not a Catholic or not a practicing Catholic, you should not receive. But as you remain in your places, this is a very profound moment to pray for the repose of our brother Huang.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Wang Paul, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, dear Bishop Laredi, Father Donahue, Father Tree, Deacon Kaung, religious sisters, beloved friends, and family. I am Lemon Kwok, the youngest son in the family. On behalf of my sisters, Kwe Hung and Kwe Tan, I would like to express our heartfelt thanks and gratitude for your presence. Thank you for taking the time to celebrate our father's life on this day. While we are saddened at his passing, we are comforted by your prayers, sympathy, and well wishes. We are so very blessed to have a great community of friends and family who has shown us so much love, not just these past days, but throughout our lives. We are forever grateful. Many things must fall in place for us to have this beautiful celebration. We would like to thank all who helped with the Mass and with funeral arrangements. Thanks to the choir, our beloved choir, for singing such beautiful, touching songs. And to all who took the time to visit and pray for our dad in the past few days, we are deeply touched and humbled. Thank you for the beautiful flowers, gifts, and cards. Thank you for the love you have shown to our Father and our family. We would like to thank the members of Heart Songs, Kampton Ga, and Seraphim Choir, in which our Father belonged to for so many years. Thank you for your singing support and affection towards our Father and our family. We extend our gratefulness to Unsanctum Meng Radio Program, Heart Songs, and the parishes of Vietnamese Martyrs, St. Ambrose, and St. Philip. To our aunts and uncles and the Greater Lay family, we truly appreciate you coming to visit and share in our grief. I would like to especially thank my sister, Kwe Hung, Kwe Hung, who spent countless hours caring for both mom and dad. Sister Kwe Tat for taking charge of all the funeral arrangements. My brother-in-law, Richard, who has infinite patience helping us out with everything. Rita, Han, and Scott, as well as our children and our extended family, for your understanding and support during this difficult time. And Ji Bat Ying for caring for dad, mom and dad, for so long, and especially in his last days. May God Bless all of you always. Cha, con cháu anh cha. Bà cha của con. Cha, thank you for being my parent. I consider myself very blessed to have had two very long living and loving parents. You both were a shelter for me and my sisters, no matter what. Yeah, to me, you are a great man, one I've always looked up to, not because of all the wonderful things you have done, but because you never let those things come between you and your family. 
always try to be there for us, and more importantly, to show us the way to God and holiness through the way you lived and loved. And yes, you live life with so much passion. It's always so fun to watch soccer with you. The room would shake whenever your team scored. And it's always a comfort to hear you play guitar. Now, you get to watch soccer and play guitar in front of God. Please pray for us in the presence of God. And thanks be to God for his infinite mercy. Rest in peace, yeah, with mom and with our brothers, I and Sean. After the burial, we cordially invite all to Halstead at the Metro Community Room, and printed directions are available in the narthex after Mass. Thank you again. Before we begin this uh, final commendation, I want to offer my own sympathy to the family. Um, I knew your dad, your grandfather, and relative for most of my time here, which is 24 years plus. And he was, for me, a, a great example of faith and of courage. I especially was, in, was inspired by the Light of the Good News radio program that he sponsored and so beautifully carried on until his health prevented him from doing so. The youngest son who just spoke I have to say to you, as I listen to the quality of your voice, I heard your dad. He had such a beautiful voice. I remember being with him and your mom tree and with all the family members, both in good times and in bad. And as the retired bishop of the diocese, and I know in the name of our, our bishop now, I want to thank God for sending us your family, for the inspiration they have been, you all have been, especially your mom and dad. This is what it means to be a pilgrim walking with Jesus. We, we carry one another, we inspire one another with our prayer and support and example. So with you I pray that Huang now is seeing God face to face. Pray he is joined with his dear wife and son and all the others of the family. And we must all remember that if we cling to Jesus, as Father said so beautifully in his homily, if we cling to Jesus, then one day, as St. Paul reminded us, nothing will keep us from eternal life in Christ Jesus. 
So let us walk in faith and one day be gathered together forever in the Father's house. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Father of mercies, we commend our brother Huang in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Huang in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his blessed of rest.
anh chụp giùm em. Không có không có xin vô hình. <cười> <cười>